If you're like me, you may struggle with waking up early or having an irregular sleep pattern and may need to nap. There's nothing inherently wrong with this until it starts to affect your daily life. The six tools in today's video are simple things you can do to get better control over your circadian rhythm and change your life dramatically. Practical tools for a purposeful life. Hello again, my friend. Edward here, your holistic guide with another dose of conscious engineering to help you take better care of yourself and this time backed by science. You don't need to do everything here but there are two key takeaways which I'll tell you about once you've understood all the building blocks. So let's get into it. Now the first key thing to do is to write down the time you wake up or at least track it in some way. I like to use tech where I can so I track my sleep with my Fitbit then sync it to Apple Health via a third-party app and then I can see my sleep patterns on a nice graph. Now it needs a bit of work I think but the key thing here is to determine the average wake up time. This informs when your body temperature minimum is and it's about two hours before you wake up on average. You don't need to know the actual temperature just the time because by knowing this you can shift your circadian rhythm and your eating schedule and this is important if you struggle with sleeping properly such as suffering from insomnia or you have an irregular sleep waking cycle which in some cases can be debilitating to normal life but but this one piece of data coupled with some of the following can help you readjust this condition and restore a normal circadian cycle, improve your sleep and help you live a normal life or at least not feel so tired as you may do. The next thing we're going to do is take a walk. When we generate our own forward motion, visual images pass by our eyes. Now this is called optic flow. The same occurs in your ears which is called auditory flow and this has the same effect if you're visually impaired. But why is it important? Well because experiencing this flow actually has a powerful effect on your nervous system. It quiets the amygdala, that little almond shaped brain cluster whose primary role is in the processing of memory, decision making and emotional responses which include fear, anxiety and aggression. Taking a walk reduces the amount of neural activity in the amygdala. It reduces and calms the anxiety, the fear and the threat responses so you start your day more balanced and centered. And there are several peer-reviewed scientific papers that back this up. Taking a walk is not about exercising calories, it's simply about reducing stress. And that's so important. And whoa, while we're talking about walking, did you know that getting sunlight into your eyes is vital to your mental and physical health? It promotes what's called metabolic well-being, which is a positive hormone function, and it steers your mental health in the right direction. Getting outdoors without sunglasses, if you can, even on a cloud day really helps here and there are actually more photons bouncing around under the clouds than a bright indoor bulb like this one actually provides. Two minutes is good, 10 minutes is great and 30 minutes is the absolute best here. Though if you live somewhere really bright like on a snow field even one minute is good. Now a period of 10 or 15 minutes stimulates specific neurons in the eyes that respond to light. They are called the melanopsin intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells to get technical. Now these are not the rods or cones that define your vision and depth of sight. They just convey its daytime to your brain by responding to light and when activated set in motion a series of biological cascades throughout your body which promote the function of your whole body and organs like your heart, your brain and your liver. And when they're triggered you actually experience a jump in cortisol. Now this is necessary and healthy early in the day and it promotes a healthy immune system. The cortisol comes from the amygdala and you get to time it by when you view bright sunlight. Now earlier here is better. When you work from home going outside might not happen until later in the day so I stare out of the window in the morning after the alarm goes off to help wake up the brain and the body. Now it's not exactly the same but it's a good workaround. But Tell me, what do you do to kickstart the brain in the morning? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you say what I think you might say, I might have something to say about that later as well. <laughs> Was it coffee? Well, let's check that out later. The third thing is hydration, and it's essential for mental purpose. In science speak, neurons require ionic flow. They need sodium, magnesium, and potassium, and we get dehydrated at night. So drinking plenty of water in the morning when you wake up is just what the body needs to get a kick start. Adding a touch of salt, maybe half a teaspoon to the water in the morning is ideal for that ionic flow. Personally, I've never been one for a glass of salted water, so I now have a smoothie loaded with vitamins and minerals and it does feel so good. Let's talk about caffeine. Now 
don't reach for that cup of java first thing on waking. Your need here is actually mostly psychosomatic. Delay your first cup of coffee or better still, cut it out completely. I did this and I actually feel so much better for it. But why is this? Well, it's all due to a chemical called adenosine, a little molecule that is produced by the body and whose levels rise steadily throughout the day. So when you drink caffeine, you're actually blocking your internal adenosine receptors who process this little molecule. So adenosine builds up in your body without being used. And then when the caffeine wears off, you experience an adenosine flood, which you feel as an afternoon crash in energy and you feel sleepy. It's kind of a catch 22 because the caffeine makes you feel awake, but then you become dependent on it to avoid the crashes and then it becomes an addiction. But adenosine does more. It helps with cellular energy transfer by creating ATP and ADP, and it helps the brain by actually depressing the central nervous system, which promotes sleep. It improves blood circulation in the heart and the kidneys, and it helps the liver break down glycogen to form glucose. So delaying caffeine avoids the afternoon sleep crash and avoiding it completely gives your body better natural regulation. Fasting helps keep the brain focused and alert. Now, I'm not talking about intermittent fasting here or some of the longer forms. I tried intermittent fasting and for my body, it was actually counterproductive. There are actually certain body types that it's not ideal for. The fasting I'm talking about here is not about eating until lunch. It's about skipping breakfast. Now, this may seem counterintuitive, but I always used to do this and it may be why I've trained myself to have an alertness and an energy that starts early and runs late. Fasting actually increases adrenaline, which is also known as epinephrine in the brain. When it's increased, we can learn better and are more focused but don't let it get too high as this makes us jittery and unfocused it takes you into fight or flight territory at these elevated levels now the sixth thing on the list is to take physical exercise for an hour now we actually need exercise five times a week according to the latest scientific studies and when you think about our ancestors physical activity was routine every single day they were physically fit and needed to be but we have become sedentary and lazy maintaining muscular health and bone health is necessary for optimal health. So fitting in some weight training or even body weight training is good. And cardio helps the brain and muscles and the organs in many, many more ways too. But you also need to get some rest. One day is good or take the weekend off. The body needs to recover. One way to encompass both is to alternate the exercise types and don't panic about needing to get in an hour every day. That may be a big ask if you're unfit. I've been there, so start small and don't beat yourself up about it. Listen to your body, not everybody else's opinion. At the moment, I'm using a rowing machine for about 30 minutes some days, and then I do some body weight exercises on other days, things like planks, push-ups and squats. Nice and easy. If you're just starting out, and again, I've been there, there is some great advice in Stephanie's video here about getting back into running, and that equally applies to any form of exercise. Now, if you're enjoying this video, I'd appreciate if you boop the like button to show YouTube its valuable content and help it spread to more people like you who'd like to benefit from this type of content. Appreciate it, thanks. Now, if you're generally healthy, you can take these ideas and integrate them into your regular daily routine as you see fit. But if you're actually suffering from insomnia or any form of circadian rhythm sleep disorder, aka irregular sleep wake type, ISWT, please consult your doctor before changing any of the significant factors. Additional vitamin supplements can also help here with some of the adjustments mentioned in this video, for example. Now, you don't have to do the same thing every day, but sunlight and regular sleep patterns are the biggest two from on this list. You don't need to give up some of the fun things for the sake of sleeping at a specific time, but you should keep your wake up time consistent as this is a great benefit. And if you want to know how to better leverage your first hour after you wake up, which includes how to embrace many of these ideas, well, watch this little video here next. And until next time, my friend, live your light. Hello there. Minolpthan is like the cinemas, but I'm not saying that. Not going outside might not happen and not, 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 not. Of course, there's a bit of colour. You shouldn't be doing that. You should not be doing that. And I've been fasting today, so what do I know? <sighs>